Hey there guys, Neil here with an app review. So for this week's app review, I wanted to cover a browser that released for Android and iOS. Uh, I guess technically re-released for Android um, because it was released in the Google Play Store but uh, was pulled because of the name but now it's back again. It was in beta form so you could um, install it as its own standalone APK and still use it. But now it's back at least for the time being. So. You can check it out. I will show the Android side of things, so um, it should generally be the same for iOS except for probably some UI changes and things like that. But in any case, it's available on both platforms. So the app itself is Adblock Browser. Um, what it does is basically do the same thing that you can do with um, the Adblock Plus plugin for Firefox and Chrome, in that it basically blocks ads as you browse the internet. So it is uh, created by the same developers as a plugin. So uh, basically you get the same uh, features and filter lists and things like that. So um, you'll do a search for Adblock Browser. Um, it may or may not show up right away, but um, I will go back into um, um, all of my apps. It should show up somewhere around here. Um, or I guess not, It was a, or there it is actually. So. Adblock browser for Android developers E Y E O G M B H. I'm not sure what any of that stands for, but you get the full um, description of what it is, uh, more information, support, and all of that good stuff. So um, that might be the better way to search is Adblock browser for Android. But um, basically, the browser is straightforward and simple. It follows the general Firefox layout. So I'll jump right into it. I've already gone through some of the initial setup process, so we can jump right into it. But essentially it brings you a browser that has ad blocking built in. You don't need to install any separate plugins or add-ons or anything like that. So if you want to set this up as a default browser for other people, it may be the way to go. So as you can see, when you open up the app, um, you get the standard um, tabs like you do see in Firefox. Um, so if you open up um, the Firefox browser, you get you have pretty much the same thing. Your history, recent tabs, top size bookmarks. So um, pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm showing you the Firefox UI just so as a point of reference as we will get a similar, or we'll see a similar th uh, feature set except for one notable thing um, when I get to that point. So back to Adblock Browser. So once you've got it set up, it'll use a default um, Adblock list for your region. Um, in my case, it's the easy list. Um, I'll jump to this really quickly just to show you what you get. So if you go into the settings and uh, ad blocking, you can see which lists are available. So for me, it's English easy list, so I kept it at that. But um, you have all of these various other lists available as well to use. Um, so basically, you have the same look and feel and functionality as Firefox. So very little learning curve there. If you jump into customize, you can set your home page. Uh, what you want as your most recent tab, your history, top sites, bookmarks, anything like that. You can show have your uh, show site suggestions based on um, what you're searching for. You can set, um, add and remove, um, or uh, mostly just remove search providers. The default is basically the same. So you have Google, Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and a few others. I just use Google, so I got rid of the other ones. Um, you can have your tabs restore or not restore and then import your bookmarks from Android in case you want to use this browser permanently. And then you have your uh, default settings, not too much here. Um, I pretty much left these alone as there's nothing um, particular, particular to set. Um, though now that I see it, I can disallow um, allowing autoplay so videos and media don't play. Um, as far as privacy goes, same settings. You can set do not track, which I did. I turned off remembering passwords. And then there's a feature to clear on exit. So you can set exactly what um, information is cleared when you leave the browser. Um, so I have everything set except for downloads in the event that I want to download a video. So it, once I do that, then I can download in Firefox and then um, delete it. Uh, when you do do set that option though in your menu but um, settings you'll now see a quit button so you can when you hit the menu bar and quit it will clear that automatically same thing with downloads in case you're just looking at things temporarily then you can have that clear away as well um, so other than that and then you can all there's also a manual clear now in case you want to uh, clear your history and start fresh or something like that um, 
in the ad blocking section so we already went over filter list so whichever ones you want to set but then you also have additional blocking options so much like the plugin that you can install for firefox and chrome uh, you have the option to disable tracking, malware domains, anti-ad blocking messages, and disabling social media buttons. So basically the similar options you have in the plugin you have here so you can um, do that as well. And then you can add a custom filter list as well. So if you have other lists that, you, that are not available as an option, those can be added here. And then finally, there's acceptable ads. So if you want to allow acceptable ads, so basically uh, whatever ad block deems as not necessarily something that's intrusive, it's not um, hacky or has a potential to maybe even have a click jacking or click baiting or try attempt to steal your data or is doing something fishy in general, um, those basically are allowed if it doesn't do any of that. So if you want to allow those, those are acceptable. So if there are legitimate sites that you want to support ads on, then you can leave those on. Um, of course, if you want no ads at all, then you can do that, but of course, um, is harder for people to make money off of ads so if you're visiting legitimate sites and um, you want to save some uh, let's say you're traveling internationally and you want to save on some of your bandwidth then it may be the way to go to turn it off and use a browser but if not then you can allow some of the non-intrusive ads so that's really the bulk of uh, what it can do you can change the language um, and things like that you can click on an ad blog browser to get more information um, and go to the website and all of that stuff and join the beta community if you want to do that as well so it's a pretty straightforward browser very minimalist um, the one major difference between it and um, fire or the Firefox or at least the Chrome and Firefox or the Firefox browser is that it doesn't have um, support for the add-ons market just yet so if you want to have other add-ons then um, it's not going to be the browser for you if you absolutely have to have those add-ons um, this is basically built for speed reliability and blocking ads so um, that's essentially what the browser can do um, I haven't checked any very many sites that it can make a difference on I did try it on uh, Wikipedia and there was very little difference but I guess it's in the normal course of ads there's uh, if or normal course of course of browsing websites and if there's ads then um, it will block them. I know the one page that it did work well on was Investopedia. So loading it, I'll load it up. It did still auto load its uh, cover ad before it loads the website. So it did that. It did block the ad that tried to show up. Um, I'll continue to the site and you have the scrolling up and down there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll check. So just for comparison, I'll go to Chrome, um, do the same thing, visit investopedia.com and still get the same ad. It's trying to load an ad in the background um, just to visit, continue onto the site, I'll continue. Um, as you can see, the page is still loading because there's no, it's not blocking any of the ads, so it's trying to load that. It does still do the overlay ad. Um, uh, that's the bulk of it as far as I know on this page, but just as a point of reference, that's that comparison as far as um, how the browser, ad block browser works compared to a browser without ad blocking software so that is really all there is for that so if you want to uh, visit the website to check it out um, I believe it was just um, ad block um, I guess I should go to the right um, browser but uh, I believe it was adblockbrowser.com so So ad block browser, frequently asked questions. So you can get, if you have questions, but adblockplus.org. Um, I believe it's all one place for the plugins and the website, but it is available for Android and iOS for free. And then if you want to use other browsers, namely Firefox and Chrome, then you can install the plugin and use that as well. But um, overall, it seems pretty stable and straightforward. Um, it works pretty well. I do use Firefox for the add-ons, but that's really about the only difference. I don't um, if it was just as far as just as far as a browsing the web and wanting to block ads, then AdBlock browser does at the moment seem a little bit lighter and smoother and lightweight than Firefox. So definitely worth a shot. I didn't see any um, plugins available for Chrome. I'm sure there's a way to do it or at least install um, uh, AdBlock for Chrome or Android or something like that. But 
if you just want it built in on in your browser then it is the way to go so definitely worth checking out it is free so um, if you have any questions you can always email me at headphonesneal at yahoo.com or find me on twitter at patel n01 but that's all for this particular screencast thanks for watching and listening and until next time